So one of the pieces I missed a little bit, um, the youth were introduced to that at the Rock Retreat several years ago by the same band that was there this year uh, to share in praise and worship with us. Uh, but when we looked online to try and find the song and use it in Amped, we found it from Hillsong, which is from Australia. So when they sing it, it's this really deep, thick Australian accent. So when we sing it in Amped, we all try and use our deepest, worst Australian accents possible <laughs> to be able to sing that song, which is a lot of fun and really wonderful. Um, so this morning, um, Rock Retreat is an amazing experience. You're going to be hearing more about that, uh, and I'm going to having a few people share a little bit about their experience, but if you guys want to just sit for a moment, and I'll invite you up in one sec, I don't want you to, awesome, that'll be great. Um, so to, to get this started, I want to share two stories with you. One story is about a Rocky Mountain, and the other story is about the Rock Retreat. The Rocky Mountain comes from the Gospel of Matthew, it can also be found in Mark and Luke as well. Uh, but it shares the story of Jesus who took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them to the top of a very high mountain. There he was transformed in front of them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Lord, it's good that we're here. If you want, I'll make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, look, a bright cloud overshadowed them. A voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I dearly love. I am very pleased with him. Listen to him. Hearing this, the disciples fell on their faces, filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Whether because of this event um, or not, churches and ministries for years have been finding ways of taking people and allowing them to have amazing experiences of God. As we shared from the Lord's Prayer today, um, our, our message today is looking at save us from the time of trial, of giving people the opportunity to experience God in powerful ways and recognize that they are not alone, that they have a powerful God that walks with them each and every day, but also realizing that God has given them a body around them of other people to gather with, to pray with, to worship with, to study with, to walk the journey with, so that they are not alone in the trials that come in the, in the midst of life. So that's our first story, the Rocky Mountain, which leads into the next story, the Rock Retreat. One of the retreats um, that I'm very fond of that our conference offers is the Rock Retreat. To give you a little history on that, uh, youth from my last church, who's actually now an ordained pastor, um, in a gathering of district youth, got together and they said, so, as a district youth ministry, what should we do? And she said, what would it look like if we went on a retreat to Ocean City? And out of that comment was born what we now see as the Rock Retreat. The first time they had this, it was a district gathering, and they had about 300 youth show up to this event. And it was amazing, and it was wonderful, and it began to grow in the district to about 500 youth that were coming out to this event. And it became, became such a great thing. Jeff Sima, who was the leader of that retreat at the time, said, started having a conversation with Tom Price at the conference about what would it look like to make this a conference-wide event and open it up to other people. When they got that started, Jeff Zima felt a call to move back home to North Carolina and wasn't able to continue with that. And he came and talked to Pam and I and asked if we would help coordinate that. So we began working with Tom Price uh, to make the Rock Retreat a conference-wide event. The first year we had it as a conference event, there were 900 people. The second year we had it, there were 1,800 people. 
The year after that, we had about 3,500 people. As you can see, it was growing uh, by leaps and bounds each and every year and becoming this amazing conference offering retreat. Youth from Southern Maryland, Central Maryland, Western Maryland were all coming together in Ocean City to gather for a time of praise, a time of worship, a time of learning. I died? I think they can all hear me. How about now? Oh, yes, it works now. Excellent. So the Rock Retreat was born out of a desire to offer an event for youth in our conference to allow them to come together to get away from uh, home, from other distractions and everything else, and come together for a powerful experience of God a place where they could have great worship, but also a place where they could gather with other youth and learn things that would help them grow in their faith and also help them to strengthen their churches when they returned. Um, each and every year that we go, it's amazing to see what the experiences of the youth are, to see how God meets them, touches them, inspires them, or even breaks down barriers for them. Uh, the things that they end up sharing in the midst of that that allow us to help them to grow as disciples and grow as, as people that are yearning for God, as people that are facing trials of life where they just need to know that they're going to be okay, that God is with them. Um, so what I'd like to do now, this past, well, first of all, this past year was an amazing year. This was the first time that we joined together with two other youth groups to come together as one and go to the Rock Retreat. It went better than we could have imagined. We were praying about this. We were working on this. We didn't know how it was going to be. It was the first time these kids were coming together. And not only did they enjoy their trip together, they fell in love with one another and the friendships have grown since then. So before you hear from some of the stories of, of people and their experiences, we want to show you a quick video so that you see what our experience at Rock was like. So please.
So one of the great misconceptions that comes when people hear the word rock or treater has in the past is that it's a rock concert. As you can see, it's anything but. There's so much more to it. It is, it is a wonderful, worshipful experience. Uh, but it is unique for each person that goes. So one of the things that we love is people to be able to share from their experience of how God touched them in the midst of that. Uh, and I would like to invite um, some folks who were touched by God over the course of this, they would like to share their experience. So Susan, Isaac, and Nathan, thank you. So I've been sending Isaac to Rock for four years. And it's, they've always come back. <laughs> <laughs> they've always come back with such energy. And the last year they came back and I said, I'm going next year. So I went this year and it was overwhelming, awe-inspiring, and I would recommend it to everyone. I would love to say there was one moment where I saw God. I saw God the whole weekend. The really cool thing is, it's about the kids, and I got something out of it. <laughs> I got something out of it. So if anybody's ever thought about going, I recommend you go. As a parent, you don't have to necessarily ask your kid. I did ask mine, and he said I could go one time. <laughs> <laughs> He's back here saying that's not true, but that's okay, because I'm going next year, too. Um, it, is, it is amazing, and it's amazing to see the kids from the three different churches get along so well and love each other and care about each other so quickly. So... I'm going to stop crying now and let somebody else talk. For the record, I never said she could not come. <laughs> it was always up to her. And uh, Rock has always been like a really, like probably, it's always around my birthday too, which is kind of nice, but it's probably like my favorite time of the year because it's a time where I don't have to worry about school, I don't have to worry about friendships, I don't have to worry about relationships, and it's just me and God and of 6,000 people that love God too. So it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, alone time is what I really like there. So on Saturday night, we have a time where we can go out onto the beach at like midnight where it's freezing cold and it's just us out there. And that sounds really weird, but it's where I felt closest to God because it's, it's a time where it's just you and God and a lot of water. And something about like that vast ocean in front of you just is awe-inspiring when you're out there by yourself praying. And Iraq has just always been like a pinnacle time for me. So we talked about how we went as a cluster this year. So we started out and we had a meeting and it was the pre-rock meeting and we, we were talking about meals and everything and we had this grand idea of having pizza together. But we, we had a um, group there that what, they ended up deeming themselves the peanut gallery and we wanted to go to five guys. So. And we also determined that the name over there, on top you see something called C cubed, which is what we like calling ourselves. And we had a hand sign like this. It was C cubed. And um, we had a lot of fun together and it was an awesome group. And the message from the bishop, I mean, even that small segment you saw, it was super powerful. She, she liked saying, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys and she kept it real the whole weekend, and it was really awesome, and going out on the beach is something that our church has always done, and we even had a youth who came with our church like three years ago, and two, two or three years ago, and he went out on the beach with us, and each year he came back with his own youth group this year, but he still comes out on the beach with our group because it's something that just everyone who does it 
you feel really close to God and just it's an amazing time of prayer and it's something that it's uncomparable to anything that you may have ever done to, with God and you just know and can feel his presence. And it's just an awesome time and we culminate at Jimmy's, which is a restaurant that we go to at the end. And this year we got the banquet hall. So we got to have all the trays and a table full of desserts and it was just an awesome time with what ended up being 40 of the closest people you could ever meet. Awesome stories. And what's neat is they're not all the same because where God meets each person in the midst of that is a different place. But it's always amazing to hear how everyone felt and experienced the presence of God in the midst of this. So whether it's on a mountaintop or at a beach or out in the woods or in the desert or even in a small group gathering, seeking out the presence of God is an important piece for each of us. But the one thing that we wrestle with all the time in youth ministry or in ministry in general is there's a tendency uh, with the youth and with other people to imagine that that's where God lives. And I remember a speaker in one of our first years as a conference event for Rock at the very end said to everyone, listen, Jesus isn't going to be standing at the end of the parking, parking lot waving at you saying, hey, see you next year. Jesus goes with you from here. That's an important piece to remember that God is with us always, that these opportunities like the rock retreat or the small groups that we've been gathering in or other retreat opportunities are awesome opportunities, just like G Jesus taking Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. It's important for us to go and find those times when we can, like going out on the beach, have just us time, us with God us in that time of presence and to seek that out. But it doesn't have to be a retreat to do that. We're about to enter into the period of Lent, a journey, a time of coming into the presence of God and experiencing that in powerful ways and doing that intentionally. Save us from the time of trial. How do we do that? We take time out with God. We seek out those powerful experiences. We seek out just the sense of God's presence with us so that we know that we're not alone in the midst of the trials of life that we are going to face. It's not that the trials will not be there. It's that we have the support and the power and everything that we need to go forward and face each and every one of those. The bishop this year is calling for the whole conference to enter into means of grace. Specifically, she's calling on everyone to consider fasting over the course of Lent. Whether that be a food fast or another type of fast, she's asking everyone within the conference to take time out to fast. Why? Because she strongly believes in the importance of each and every one of us growing our faith and growing our understanding that the presence of God is with us always. So you heard about the presence of God powerfully in the stories that you heard this morning. I encourage you to talk to other youth that went to Rock as well and find out their experiences. Talk to other adult leaders that went because, as I like to tell everybody when we go, uh, the Holy Spirit does not discriminate. It's not like the Holy Spirit is only there for the youth. Every time we go, I find adults are touched just as much as anybody else. Um, but find out their stories. And in the midst of hearing their stories, I want you to reflect on something. How many of you, either on a retreat or at a camp or in a youth group or in church in worship, have had that powerful experience of God? And I want you to remember it. I want you to savor it. I want you to remember what that experience was like and pray on it and think about it and let it absorb you again. Because it's those memories, it's those experiences, it's those times that help us in the trials that we have in life 
to remember that there is a God and that there is a God that is with us and there is a God that goes with us everywhere we go so that when we do face trials, we don't have to be afraid. We can let our light shine. Amen.